Good afternoon, morning. Welcome to Turbo Tortoise Tech. If you're new here, I'm recently four piece variety with Triple XL. In today's buyers guide, we're going to be covering the best budget and the best beast that you could basically hope to buy with your South African runs. Um, by best budget, I mean an actual gaming PC that won't limp around like ANC promises as we collect potholes. And by beast, I mean like literally no holes barred. This is like pretty much the best premium gaming experience you could hope to have. So starting off with best budget, this this upgrade kit is very good um, for what it costs. It's got a pretty decent motherboard with some upgradability. No second NVMe slot, which is a bit of a ish. But uh, there's a second four times slot, so you could always buy an adapter card and put it in there. Hashtag just saying. Um, <laughs> it's got a pretty decent sound card. It's got a pretty decent set of ports as well. Not the best power delivery under the sun. It's just a full size motherboard with RAM upgrading. So if you want to get like a big multi threading processor, it will run if only just there's just enough power delivery over there to make sure that you could run like a 12 core, you know, 120 watts sort of part. But this is nowhere near that. This is like between 60 to 85 ish watts. This uh, 5700 doesn't have the greatest cache ever, but it's got a lot of cores. Eight cores. 16 thread part which is why i like it then for gpu it's still the b580 at the front on value and this challenger edition is very good bang for buck it's going to have pretty decent cooling you won't need to have an absolute torrent in your pc just a bit of airflow it's going to do its job very very well then for power supply i'll be going up a little bit just so that you can in the future upgrade to a big boy gpu if you wanted to get something that needs dual 8 pin connectors and will chow 300 or even 350 watts this will give you enough headroom that you should be able to run something like that quite comfortably then for storage wd blue is still just it's just the best this will last you an incredibly long time our uh, SN572 TB has been hard worked on the test page and it just doesn't miss a beat. And then for a case, tell us E3 mesh, front side mesh, two 120s in, 120 at the back, can fit a water cooler up top. Pretty good bang for buck. That brings us to our final card at 16,595 Rand, or you can just get this pre built, which is the same, same, but different, but still same. Um, six cores uh, is going to be noticeably less multi-threading uh it's still got 12 threads so it's still got hyper threading and stuff the big plus here is you've got 32 gigs of ram same one tb and me it comes with windows 11 home installed on it as well you get a full license with it and a 750 watt as well um in the gum DS or a gc6 it will come with a laminar cooler as far as i can remember with the pre-built um so if you want to do heavy multi-threading uh, workloads i would suggest budgeting about four or five hundred bucks to get a tower cooler you can slap that puppy on and then you're pretty much over away for gaming and streaming then for the i don't want to ever deal with no frames like ever <laughs> The, yeah, the, this 9800 X3 upgrade kit oh, and this Ashrock X870, it looks so pretty and it's got three NVMe slots with cooling on it, which is mm, very nice. Uh, port setup on this, absolutely fantastic. It's got built-in Wi-Fi as well, which is really nice to have because it comes with Bluetooth, so you can connect controllers and speakers and just about anything you would want to connect to the solution um that's a lot of power. As you know, there's two eight pins up there. It's got a ton of cooling on it as well it's built to last and with this kit it's going to run very very well the other big consideration with this is the ram 7200 megahertz so you're going well over that 6000 megahertz cl30 level with this crash v uh, rgbs they do perform just a little bit better they super beefy limited lifetime warranty the cooler is still very very strong it's not everybody's taste i think with the lcd screen on it and stuff but it's very overkill for the cpu um yeah i don't go over like 70 with a 240 more rad with overclock on this so yeah it, it that's that's a lot of cooler for this bolt then for gpu you knew it was going to be 9070 xt this is the bang for buck king in the enthusiast segment however there are a couple concessions that you have to make with this you can game and stream but you lose out on nvidia broadcast and there's some games that still don't just, just don't run they need to have the fsr4 implemented or to get there but fsr4 i have to say is the best upscaling implementation especially where the feel of the game is considered because it doesn't really increase your render latency i was getting two to eight milliseconds in stalker 2 averaging about 120 130 fps while gaming and streaming of the god it now does the things especially where fsr is implemented but dlss has better better general implementation and you're going to get in video broadcast and this is still the one that i would pick if you're going to do gaming and streaming then for power supply this thousand watt with a 10-year warranty 
It has an ATX3 connector as well, so you can go straight in you, from power supply straight in as well, which is less interconnecting pieces that can set themselves on fire, which I think you'll agree is quite attractive. <laughs> the price of this performance here is incredibly good. Uh, I didn't see one in black, so we're kind of doing a mix match. Stormtrooper build is what we're going for here. Input storage, Clev C930, still basically the best premium NVMe, uh, Gen 4, um, yeah, uh, 7,000 and 6,800. Also doesn't really struggle when it goes over half full, doesn't just get slowed down into the absolute doldrums, and it comes with a, a heatsink that you can also remove. You don't have to put it on, so you can use one of those fancy slots. In every case, I want to go with something a little bit different and something Antec. Uh, that C8 wood was super, super nice, and the Flux Pro, the layout and the included fan kit over here actually does present pretty damn good value. If you read carefully over here, you'll see it's got three 140 mil fans at the front, two on the PSU shroud over there, and then one at the back. So if you put a 360 mil rad over here at top, you're going to have five in and three out. And those two at the bottom, hold on. There's a good picture of it here. The, the, look. They're going to, these are reverse flows. So even though they open face like that, the flow isn't going down, it's going up. So it's going to blow straight in the face of your GPU and deliver clean, fresh air right in its mouth because they've put a full mesh grate on the side of this, of the thing over here. Um, yeah, you can see like the power supply mount and stuff on this is pretty unique. It's very cool. I've got to say, this is a very, very nasty design case. I'd love to do a build in this. If you, if you want to buy this PC, you can hit me up in the Discord and I'll build it for you for free just because I want to build in this case, <laughs> to be very honest with you. Really nice garrets as well on the side. It's going to look super neat when this thing comes together. And a removable top for mounting water cooling, it's, it's a good time. And that brings us to our final card at 47,300 rand. Yeah, it's a lot of it's a lot of runs, but this will play basically anything on 1440p. Absolutely maxed out. Even entry level 4K gaming is very, very I say entry level. It'll do 4K 60 FPS, especially without ray tracing. On rasterizing performance, this thing's a monster. And yeah, if there's FSR 4 in your favorite game, it's going to be really good. Even if there's 3.1, it does the forced upgrade to the FSR 4. But this is this is the kind of no holes barred. I just want to have all the frames all the time and I'm demanding and it will deliver. Anywho, that is all I have for you this week on the best budget and beast PCs. As I've said, if you guys need help, please hit me up in the Discord. I'm, I'm way more responsive on Discord um, than any other sort of communication platform. Uh, you can find me via EveTech's Discord. It's on the link tree on all of the various social medias. So if you need help with your build or your budgeting, just hit me up there and we will get it sorted out for you. Anywho. That's all I have for you this week. If you have enjoyed this, please do hit us up with a like and subscribe. And I will see you on the flip side.